Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use the new VESC tool app, which is the latest app we recommend for Android uh, with the latest uh, 5.1 firmware and our new Bluetooth modules on the Metro Board X. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, turn your board on. It doesn't really matter the order, but you can turn your board on first, okay? And then click on the VESC tool app. Okay, so here's the kind of starting screen. So uh, you want to basically hit the scan button to be able to find the Bluetooth module for the first time. Okay, so hit scan. In this case, I found one that already existed, which is mine. Um, you can always rename it. Uh, mine already has a name, uh, Elon X, but if you want to give it a new name, of course, give it whatever you want. And then uh, go ahead and hit the connect button. And you'll see on the bottom of the screen a green bar that highlights that shows that it's connected and it's read all the data. Uh, and that's kind of how you get started. Um, now the first screen you want to do, go to is what's called the real-time data screen, which is the one just to the right of the start screen. And uh, you can see here um, some basic information. Uh, you got current, duty cycle, ERPM power. This is typically for, this is the data just for the master mask. What I typically recommend is going, is kind of swiping up and it'll take you to the more interesting screen, which is the uh, combined data of both uh, the master and slave motors, since you have a two motor system. And what you can see in the upper left is power, current on the right, and then speed in the middle, battery percentage, and duty cycle. This battery percentage is actually is based on range. So it's basically going to give you uh, an estimated battery capacity based on estimated range left. It's not measuring voltage, but actually range based on watt hours per mile. You can see in the bottom section of the screen, there's milliamp hours out, milliamp hours in, watt hours out, watt hours in, and then miles per trip, watt hours per mile, uh, and then... Uh, mile range. So that's the estimated range you have left. Now it says infinity because I haven't actually written the board, but once you start moving, that'll get updated. And then VESC, it should say two here because you have two VESC connected. Now for this data to be correct, uh, you need to make sure that the uh, the uh, the gearing and the wheel size is input correctly. So we ship it by default with the setting set for the 190 millimeter wheels and the, uh, the gearing associated with that. So I'm going to show you how to change that though, if that needs to be updated. So let's scroll to the motor config screen here, which is up here. And so the first thing I always recommend doing is always hit read data, okay? Because even though when you connect to the app, it'll automatically read data, sometimes it may miss that. So it's critical that you always read before you write. So go ahead and hit read. You'll see an updated uh, green bar on the bottom of the screen indicating it's read the data. And here there's two drop down menus where it says general and general. So the first one you click on, you click on where it says additional info, which is the lowest item in the menu. And here's where you'll see the gearing issue, gearing information, and also the wheel diameter. So for the 190 millimeter wheels, which is our typically our default setup that we ship with, um, the gear ratio is 3.6, and the wheel diameter is 190. Uh, however, if you're using, for example, the 52 tooth pulleys and the 155 millimeter wheels, this would need to be changed to, for example, 2.6. So for the 52 tooth pulley, this should be 2.6. Hit done, and the wheel size you'd also update to 155 and then hit done. Sometimes you need to hit the back button to be able to see the rest of the screen, okay? And then and then when that, once you have that data correct, go ahead and hit right, okay? And you'll see again the green highlighted bar on the bottom indicating that right was successful. Um, again, now let's say you're using the 107 millimeter wheels. So again, we'd have to change this. So every time you change the wheels, this needs to be updated to make sure that the speed data and the range data and the distance data is accurate on the telemetry screen. Again, let's go ahead and change this for the, uh, the street wheel setup. So, again, a gear ratio for the for the street wheels, it's actually 1.8 is the gear ratio. Okay, this is anytime you're using a 36 tooth wheel pulley. Okay, which is the street wheel setup. In this case, you change this either to 107 if you're using, for example, our ABIC 11107s, or if you're using, for example, our <clears throat> 120 millimeter cloud wheels, that would be set to 120. Okay, and again, hit back, and then you hit right. Okay. And then you see the confirmation bar. So anytime you, you change wheels, you should go into the screen, additional info under motor config, and then update this data. And then make sure, again, always remember to read, like read the data, and then modify, and then hit write. It's critical you always follow that order to make sure none of the other settings get screwed up. All right, now one other thing I wanted to show you is creating what are called profiles, which we sometimes call modes. So here you can create a profile that, for example, limits your speed or increases your power or reduces your power. So Let's show an example here. So you click the Add Profile button on the left corner, lower left corner, 
and let's call this one, let's say, 10 miles an hour, okay? So this is a profile where we're going to limit the speed to 10 miles an hour, okay? So here, what we'd want to do is, you can see that there's four, four boxes here. So there's forward, reverse. So this is for the speed. So let's say you want the speed to be limited to 10 miles an hour. Just type in whatever speed you want there, done. Again, reverse also, you may want, typically you'll want to limit the speed the same way, but some people might want to limit it in a different way or, you know, have less reverse speed than forward speed because it's more comfortable that way. So you can update that to whatever you want. Now, here's another very important uh, input field that you can change. So this is called motor current scale. So what this is, by default, we set the, the motor max and min current to 60 amps, plus 60 and minus 60 for excel and brake. However, we also limit, we, we, we scale that number by this percentage here. So when we shift the boards, this is actually going to say 75% excel, 75% brake. Okay. Um, I recommend staying that. Basically, that'll, that'll, when you scale it to 75% in each one, that's 75% of 60 amps, so that'll be 45 amps. Um, I recommend starting out with 75, 75, which is the default. In this case, I'd up my Excel to 83, which was basically about 50 amps, but again, I'm just going to change this back to 75, which is the default you'll see. Okay, as you get more experience with it, you can potentially up these numbers, again, up to 100%, which will give you the kind of the maximum power we, that the system can handle. But I recommend starting out with 75, 75. Again, this is already programmed that way as you receive, but if you're creating a new mode, you have the ability also to increase that power beyond the 75%. But like I said, start out with 75 in both Excel and Break, and as you get more experience, you can try upping that as high as 100%, but again, only once you feel comfortable. Okay, so now we're done specifying these settings here, so I'm gonna hit OK. So now you can see here's the mode listed under Profile. So you have a few options here. You have Use Until Reboot and Use Permanently. Use until reboot will basically apply the setting while the board's on, and then once you put, turn the board off and back on again, it will go back to the previous setting. So, for example, we go use until reboot. You can see on the bottom of the screen it had a little green bar showing that it applied the mode. And also, you'll see that it also um, highlights that mode in blue here, the profile. That, that's the actual mode you have applied right now. Again, if you want to make the setting permanent so that it stays even when you reboot the board, you hit the use permanently button and then it will not only apply the mode now, but also keep that mode after you power cycle. Um, again, you can always change, create a new mode and, and get back to the original setting if for some reason you didn't like that new permanent setting, but that's just a way to do it if you know you're gonna to wanna to stay with that setting. Um, and again, you have these other buttons. Edit will allow you to edit the mode again if you wanna change it, of course. Um, up and down, if you have more than one modes, you can kind of shift between their positions on, on the display on the screen. And of course, delete, you can delete the mode. So that's basically all you need to know to get started with this new uh, VESC tool. Um, it's really powerful. Um, again, you don't need to get into all details of how it works and, and definitely do not change any settings without consulting with us first beyond what I've just showed you in this video. There's other stuff you can get access to through this tool, but if you inadvertently change something, you could potentially either damage the board or create a safety issue. So definitely don't make any changes without consulting with us beyond what I've showed you in this video. Uh, and we hope you enjoy this new tool. And of course, if you have any questions, let us know.